48 hours to the big Brexit vote, the Prime Minister says trust in democracy is at stake. Might there be anything the EU can say now to help swing the vote? We'll be live in Brussels and in Westminster. Also tonight... Good evening. In the 48 hours before the parliamentary vote that could define Brexit and her future, the Prime Minister has told MPs not to play games but to do the right thing for the country. Theresa May is widely expected to lose a Commons vote on the withdrawal deal she's negotiated with the EU, with Jeremy Corbyn saying today Labour will table a vote of no confidence in the government soon after. But Mrs May says voters' trust in the democratic process is at stake if Brexit is not delivered. Our chief political correspondent, Vicky Young, reports. The family of an 11-year-old who was killed in a hit-and-run accident in Manchester yesterday have paid tribute to him, saying he was an intelligent, loving boy who was always smiling. Taylor Schofield was treated by paramedics at the scene but died of his injuries in hospital. Police are questioning a suspect, as Fiona Trott reports. Scotland's First Minister has referred herself to a standards panel over meetings that she had with her predecessor, Alex Salmond, while he was being investigated over claims of sexual harassment. He denies the allegations. Sarah Smith in Glasgow, thank you. Two men have died in separate falls in the Mourne Mountains in Northern Ireland, an area popular with hill walls. Three people have been killed and a fourth is missing after an avalanche near the Austrian ski resort of Lech. Austria has been hit by record snowfall in the past week and there have been more than 20 weather-related deaths across parts of the Alps so far this month. Bethany Bell reports. President Trump has again blamed the Democratic Party for the partial shutdown of the U.S. government, which is now in its 23rd day. The standoff over the funding the president wants to build a wall along the Mexican border has affected more than 800,000 people who work for the federal government and who are not being paid. We'll let John Sopel in Washington. Thank you. In Yemen, clashes this weekend in the strategic port city of Hodeidah have dealt a fresh blow to the fragile truce that's been in place since last month. The ceasefire agreed between Houthi rebels and government forces backed by Saudi Arabia and Western allies has allowed some much-needed aid into the country. The Time now for the sport. Let's join Cathy Nanasegaram at the BBC Sports Centre. Hello, Cathy. Hello, Michelle. Thank you very much. It was a pivotal weekend in Rugby Union's European Champions Cup. Saracens booked their place in the quarterfinals. Glasgow kept themselves in contention with a win over Cardiff Blues, but it was in Devon that league leaders Exeter had a 34 points to 12 win over French league champions Castor. As Patrick Geary reports. It's time to pop out of the room if you don't want to know today's Premier League results as Match of the Day 2 follows soon on BBC One. Manchester United... England's netballers have made a winning start to their... The first Grand Slam of the tennis season starts in the next couple of hours with seven British players in action on day one. The focus, though, will be on Andy Murray, who may be playing his last ever match, which has led to glowing tributes from two of the sport's all-time greats. Joe Wilson reports. Well, that's it from the BBC Sports Centre for now, Michelle. Carthy, thank you very much. And that's it from us for tonight, now on BBC One. Time for the news wherever you are. Good night.